watching at home, welcome to Adelaide Eternal. I am Sarva McClinton. In the booth with me here is Drew Carter. Hi, everyone. We're doing some coverage of the Toowoomba online Discord uh, webcam tournament. This is the semi-finals. Thank you very much to the Toowoomba crew for organising the event and also uh, allowing us to do some uh, commentary here. So we have on the right, we have Mulch, and we'll find out what uh, deck Mulch is on in a second. Uh, and we also have Aaron Sadler on the left. Uh, I know for a fact that that is a Time Vault combo deck. So uh, maybe Drew, you can tell us a bit about these two decks. Yep, sure. So, um, so let's, we'll go down to Aaron first because we covered him in the last um, last tournament. He's on the right. Um, he's changed his deck up a bit. He was running Mishra's Workshop and Paradox um, engine and crushed me with those cards um, in the last tournament. This is the fourth tournament tournament. And so he's made the final again, I think undefeated. Oh, this is the semi-final, sorry. Undefeated. Just um, carving up the time vault, right? Yeah, carving up with this very dedicated traditional combo list. Um, with a backup man plan in Mentor, but what's he, what he's changed is he's changed the points. So it's now, if we're looking at Moxfield here, his deck, if we go down the bottom, it says seven points. We can see it's Time Vault still, Mana Vault still, then Force of Will and Enlightened Tutor. So the Enlightened Tutor is obviously to add redundancy and tutor up for the Time Vault. And Force of Will is just to provide that protection to force through his combo. This, I mean, that this, high blue count is really huge, isn't it? The ability for a combo deck to support Force of Will is really, really nice. Yeah, if we look at 59% of all these pips mm, are blue. So very, very high blue, blue count. Yeah, uh, it's four colours, but mainly blue. Yeah. And if we could look, we can just look slowly at the, the deck. So there's mm -hmm. the top. These are new art. These are new additions. So Tezzeret's a famous nice. um, vintage piece to combo with Time Vault. Tutors it up and um, gives you infinite turns with that. But Sahili is an interesting one that I, I looked at and I thought, oh, yeah, if you do use its minus two ability um, to, cop to copy uh, Time Vault with one of your other artifacts, um, you can just tap it and get another turn. So I don't think it goes, it only goes infinite if you can keep casting a non creature spell to get, um, oh no, you're going to run out of uh, loyalty on Sahili. But still, at least you can do it for, you know, a, a handful of free turns, set yourself up to find the actual piece that will combo with you, with your time vault. Yeah, you can get two free turns out of it. Nice. Yeah, some most of the usual suspects here from last time, but here's a new uh, creature that combos with time vault. Just a two oh, cost. I remember this. Yeah, just a two cost wizard to untap target artifact or creature. Um, having having a um, uh, another Time Vault costed card that untaps Time Vault, so they're both two minor. Does that mean that Muddle the Mixer is in the list? Uh, no, I can't see Muddle here. It might be. It feels it feels like Muddle the Mixer, you know. When when you yeah. see a Fedor Alchemist, you're, oh, maybe there's a two CMC kind of theme in there. Yeah, he's got the Tribute Mage, but that only gets the artifact. Yeah, mm. the Muddle could be something to think about because he does like having. Um, oh, yeah, it's not an instance. He does like having interaction. Look, look at all that interaction. Like, sort yeah, of that's so yeah. much interaction. I, this is probably testament to why he's um, putting up such good results with Time Vault, which is the his protection is very, very well committed. You know, he's got the main deck Duress Inquisition Thoughtseize or Dits plan and Collective Brutality as well. Uh, and then having Spell Pierce, Fluster Storm, Force of Will, Force of Negation is, uh, I think Force of Negation is the board maybe. Uh, is pretty huge. Yeah, Force of Negation, Spell Snare, other, other interaction in the board. Mm -hmm. We can look at that after game one. Uh, and okay. then, yeah, lastly, just the artifacts, just um, the namesake and then a bit of mana fixing and comboing and mana. Yeah. Well, the, yeah, the thing that would, would strike you is that, you know, is it a Mox Opal deck where you kind of look, oh, there's only actually 10 artifacts, but in reality, uh, Sahili makes an artifact uh, the tutors essentially make an artifact, like Whir is essentially making an artifact. The mm. creatures are, you've got Hope, Strix, Spellskite, Voltaic Servant, all of which are artifacts. Tezzeret finds an artifact uh, mana piece if you need it. Yeah. And then you've also, is there like a Seed and Synod or something like that in the, in the list? These two get artifacts and Emery gets an artifact as well. Exactly. So like it looks like a low artifact count, but in reality it's very high because of the redundancy from tutoring. Yeah. And there's Academy Ruins to get back an artifact. Mm. And Inventor's Fair. Well, although you've got to have three artifacts to activate that. This is nice. I hands. like it. Two basics. Mm. Um, yeah, I really like the list. And the Lightning Bolt's interesting. Like, he, I think he used to have that to combo out of Underworld Breach, but 
he doesn't have that angle anymore, but he still obviously likes the bolt enough just as a, as a fair interactive spell. If you're, if you're playing in a Toowoomba metagame, then I think you need... See, look, in the, in the sideboard, Fatal Push, you, you actually do need to respect the fact that your opponent is going to go turn one, Noble Hierarch, and if you are on the play and you bolt that uh, uh, Hierarch, you often give yourself two time walks. You know, like you've got so far ahead of the plan that they were uh, prepared to enact uh, that it gives you a, a really good opportunity to combo out. There's his curve. It's still one, two, three, very low. Probably lower than last time. Mm, nice, um, yeah. It's only a 1.68 mana is the average uh, casting cost without lands. Very low. The average mid-range deck is something like you know, 2.5. Point, 2. And a half, yeah. Ish. Yeah, so that's cool. And let's have a look at um, Mulch's deck to see mm-hmm. how it's going to line up. That's not it, sorry. What was Mulch playing? This is, this is Mulch's deck. This is oh, Affinity. Deck. Yeah. So nice. I think he was trying this guy. Mm, Umori the Collector? Yeah. Sorry. Nice. So the, essentially the entirety of the list is uh, artifacts, right? That's the, that's the thing that he names, not creature or, you know, whatever else. Mm-hmm. Artifacts. Artifact. A lot of the time, yeah, mm-hmm. a lot of the time Umori can only really be legitimized by playing an all-creature deck and you use adventure spells like Bone Crusher Giant and Brazen Borrower, that kind of stuff. But this is taking the other tack. Just they're all artifacts. It means you don't get to do weird things like transmute artifact and tinker and that kind of stuff. But instead, it's a really, really straightforward plan of uh, uh, vaulting yourself ahead on colorless mana with things like Ancient Tomb, City of Traders. Uh, and then you've also got a little bit of uh, essentially mana ramp in the form of uh, Mox Opal and Soul Ring, that type of stuff. Uh, and then the rest is just, just you know, uh, legitimate legitimate threats. So it's not about uh, affinity. You know how typically people think of affinity as an aggro deck where you're going uh, zero mana one one. You know zero mana zero two flying. Yeah, these these types of very very fast um, explosive openers empty your hand on turn one or two. Uh, this is not that not the case. It's, it's quite a different approach to affinity. Um, there are a number of uh, little trinkets in there which allow mulch to just kind of cycle through his deck, like Relic of Progenitus and, you know, uh, the uh, Soul Guide Land and that type of stuff. Uh, and then in reality, his actual threats are kind of three mana. You know, there's a few little two mana things like the usual suspects in Arcbound Ravager, but in reality, the things that are going to be attacking are going to be three mana or more. Mm. Yeah, like it, I was, I was really surprised. Like his points... So obviously you, you talk about a little bit of ramp, but there's a decent amount of ramp. Soul Ring, Mishra's Workshops, Talaran Academy, that's one, two, three, four, five, six points. Um, and then the seventh is Caracas, yeah. Um, mm, nice. So it's all mana. Um, and then, yeah, it's got Artifact Lands, so it's really going big on for Arcbound Ravager and stuff like that. All the one, drops, makes, are really, yeah, one but, drops are really funny, like just for curve reasons, he's... He's, he's respected the curve. He wants a lot of one-drops, but he's, he's playing Pithing Needle main deck. You know? Well, I mean, he doesn't get the opportunity to have spells, you know. You can't, you can't answer a Planeswalker, just jam this Pithing Needle. Uh, the, yeah. the metal cra- note that the Metalcraft turns on things like Rusted Relic. Uh, Rusted Relic is just a four mana 5-5, five five, essentially. Like, yeah. as, long as, you, as long as you've got Metalcraft, it's four mana 5-5. Five five. It's an expensive uh, time ago. <laughs> it's an expensive time. <laughs> Not expensive when you're running Soul Ring and Ancient Tomb. <laughs> no, it'll work shot. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, but it's, I think it's really interesting. Like, I think the graveyard interaction is fine because it all cycles anyway. Mm-hmm. Um, and then he's just got creatures and he's got Metal Worker for more ramp as well. So what are the payoffs for being all artifacts? Like, obviously he gets... Uh, Umori. He gets the, yeah, the Umori. Yeah, that's, that's the main payoff. The main payoff is essentially uh, you draw an additional card in your hand. It's, it's generally a bad card. You know, it's a seven mana four five. Uh, the discount is almost entirely irrelevant. You know, it's going to give you the opportunity to make your Ballista one bigger uh, or, you know, cast Triskelion maybe one turn in advance, you know, that, that kind of thing. But almost always, you're not going to really get that Umori out very easily 
you're not you're not planning to go. Let's get my umori now. I'll play my spells. It's the other way around. I've exhausted my spells. I'll play my umori because I've got nothing left. And that's sometimes a four or five just doesn't. But yeah, like it's quite the color requirements are quite intense. Like I suppose he's got he's got three swamps here, plus a little bit of colored mana in the Vault of Whispers and the Tree of Tales. But uh, umori, sorry, or, or, orberg. Uber, whatever, <laughs> Urborg. <laughs> Urborg. <laughs> he could he he could find himself without the coloured mana he needs. Well, he's got Mox Opal and stuff, but an expedition mana. Yeah, he'll probably by the time, as you say, by the time he gets around to casting it, he'll he'll probably have the mana. Yeah, it's very much the Yorion philosophy. Where I've been playing a lot of Yorion decks, and it's essentially uh, okay. I've exhausted all my options. Now I'll just play a four-five flyer, and sometimes it gives you an advantage, like drawing a card by blinking a, you know, um, abundant growth or something. But fundamentally, it's just a, you know, a big, big threat having an extra card in your hand. There's some payoff, like so. Payoff in addition to that, you get metal worker and mystic forge, so that's mana and card advantage. You get the asymmetry of lodestone golem. Um, you get etched champion, yeah, like so metal craft things. And mm. like Ravager, Sack Shenanigans. It's got Sorceress Not Spyglass getting to play main deck as well. Like... Sorceress Spyglass main deck as well as Pithing Needle. <laughs> uh, he <laughs> needs to cast some kind of removal spell, you know, he just doesn't have a removal spell. Need to need to be able to play the Sorceress Spyglass. But yeah, it's a big it's a big cost not being able to play things like Khan, uh, you know, Sign of Urza because you've got Umori. So, you know, mm. this would be a lovely Khan deck, but you can't do it. So the Umori is obviously uh, something he's testing to see whether it's worth it or not, and I would I would argue that drawing an additional card is probably worth it. Uh, it just depends on how the list starts to get refined. You know, maybe some of the cards are going to switch around. There might be some, you know, different threats or you know different things for your metagame. Here, you can mm. hate on the on the graveyard easily, which is great. But in some yeah. metagames, it might be something else in that place. But we'll see. Yeah. Maybe we'll uh, pop down to the match and yeah. and see how it pans out. Well, yeah, I know he said to me he was conscious not to create too many huge things to steal from Duck, like from Duck Faden to steal. So that's why the worm coils in the sideboard. Um, mm. Even though Duck Faden is going to be a problem anyway, but he just didn't yeah, Duck Faden just that's it. Like Duck Faden just takes his stuff anyway, and you just have a bad time. So he just didn't want to lose his best stuff. Like I suppose. the best, the best stuff. He's got Traxos. That's another payoff for being artifacts. But um, yeah, but yeah. I'll just say we'll go down to the match. Um, excuse me. He's he's on a mold of six, I believe, Mulch is. Because um, okay. I think he wanted to... I think he said he had a... I was watching the start. He, he, he had a f- acceptable hand, but he knew what Aaron was on and he wanted and just, more disruptive Yeah, I didn't have hand. that interaction. Mm. Yeah. Because um, right. he could mulligan into Pithing Needle or, and Sorcerer's Spyglass and just go, hey, well, uh, this is going to make your game hard. You know, maybe, Very maybe hard. Tribute Mage or something will beat down, but it's going to just dramatically change the game. Yeah, I mean, I, I was kind of casting dispersions. Oh, Aaron's mild six as well. I was kind of casting dispersions on the Pithic Needle and, um, oh, you're right, Munch is on the right. Yeah, that's Gemstone Mine. So that's so the if, one where you, if you're on the draw, you get like a free Mox Diamond effectively. Nice. You get to reveal it and then put it into play or something like along those lines yeah, with a gem, exile a card, gem counter. So he's exiled Metal Worker and that, that's now oh. can tap for any coloured mana. Right. So if you're on the draw, you can choose to mulligan, essentially, and you have a land in play. Get back on the play, yeah. Mm. So this is Probe. So you're saying... Axiom Probe for Engineered Explosives. Phyrexian Revoke is very, very good here, and it it says why the Lightning Bolt is in uh, Aaron's deck. Uh, Herbal to and Sorcerer's Spyglass. Sorcerer's Spyglass. <laughs> two, two, <laughs> yeah, like two way shut up. Two needle effects for for time time vault. This and is like, punishment for you to der, for deriding the needles, right? To yeah, say, yeah. hey, I've got two of them in the exact matchup that I need them. So yeah. I can see why the mulligan, uh, why Mulch chose to mulligan that. Oh yeah, so that's a preordain. Apologies for the video. I hope it cleans up at some point. Um, it must just be what bandwidth of the of the host my, or my, my bandwidth, but. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, well, at least our faces are in just crystal clear resolution. Yeah. Oh, maybe it's Aaron's bandwidth. Yeah. Let's let's blame him. Let's blame him for that. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I was just preordained off. Uh, I'm going to guess snow covered island there. Yeah. It is. Yeah. So 
So that's okay. Another land into Dark Silver Citadel. Yeah. Phyrexian well, Revoker. let's let's take a guess at what this this <laughs> Phyrexian Revoker is naming. Yeah. I think maybe it's a four point card. Yeah. Black Lotus. We're not Black Lotus. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, I mean, he's got, Aaron's got the Tireless Switch and the Lightning Bolt. Yeah, being able to kind of deploy his things, you know, deploy the the Time Vault and, and then the once he's set up at the right time, Perilous Voyage and, you know, end of turn and scry or whatever it might be. Uh, it's definitely strong. So, you, did you see Aaron's hand? I haven't seen his hand yet. No. Okay. No, what his All right. plan is. But yeah, the, the uh, revoke is. I thought it was a. Uh, I think oh, this it's is Badlands. Yeah. The Light Turtle's 18 against 20. Thought Seas. Mm, I guess this Thought Seas is going to be hitting the Sorceress Spyglass. Oh, Engine Explosives. Okay, so there's next level. There's ob obviously there's a next level game going on here. We don't know Aaron's hand. There could easily be something that, you know, he doesn't care if you name Time Vault because he's going to be doing some other plan. I don't know. We could have mentor in hand. Yeah, a mentor plan would just completely destroy this uh, this situation. Yeah, you out of interest on player, do do you have the option to play in uh, one point five speed or not? Is that a thing that you have on your player? I don't believe so. Some players do it, and some players don't do it. Yeah. In the meantime. It looks like it's just the Phyrexian Revoker going the distance, right? <laughs> just the little 2-1 little that could little bear. So, so a 2-1, uh, so if a 2-2 if a two -two is a Grizzly Bears, a 2-1 is what, a Goblin Piker? Is that what they call them? Yeah, Goblin yeah. yeah. <laughs> so what's, so the what's its card? It's got two counters on it. It's, a, it's the protection from multicolor one, I presume. Oh, okay. Oh, no, no, no. It must be a scrapyard. Because no, that would be minor. three. Yeah. Yeah, I see. Scrap scrap yard scrap yard yard trawler or something. The one that kind of returns some things from the Yeah, it's modular. The graveyard. Yeah. Whatever Why do you it think it's Karen like took the um, engineered explosives? I reckon, I reckon he's got mental because he's just fetched for Tundra here and the opportunity to kind of go mental bauble and know that your opponent has nothing. Oh, not mental. No, it's trinket mage. Tribute mage. Yeah, trinket mage. Mages. One. The, 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 uh, the pixels. <laughs> I can tell it's a tribute mage from having seen quite a few tribute mages in my time. Yeah. Pixels. No, I think it's trinket mage. It's trinket, right. yeah. Okay. I don't know. Yeah, trinket mage. Yeah. Uh, we'll find out. We'll find out soon enough based on what he fetches. So what, what do you fetch with Trinket Mage in this deck usually? You know, other than, other than key, obviously the two key variants, Manifold Key and Voltaic Key, are there things that get you out of this scenario? It's manifold. Because it can't have an activated ability. Oh, okay. But it can't have an activated ability because if it does, it's going to get shut off by, by um, Sorceress Spyglass, which he knows is in hand. Is, All right, that, that looks right? like... Is that like a, I've got to say like a grindstone? I reckon that's Lotus Petal. Expedition? Lotus Petal, okay. The Masterpiece Lotus so, Petal. Okay, this this is just like screaming mentor, right? Mm. Like it, fetching for Lotus Petal here screams mentor. It, this this is probably going to be, you know, getting rid of exp uh, uh, engineered explosives, fetching for Lotus Petal should be like, warning signs in Mulch's head, right? Mm. And there's not much he can do about that because uh, Sorcerer Spyglass doesn't shut off mana abilities, right? No. So there's not exactly much he can same do about it. Yeah. yeah. It's not like Revoke is the only one that shuts off mana abilities. There's not much he can do about it. The and what what does Mulch do? You know, you could you could play the Sorcerer Spyglass and name Time Vault as well, and just go like, I'm just going to make sure I don't just randomly die. You're not like next leveling me. Uh, but uh, either actually, either way, Sorcerer Spyglass looks at their hands. So <laughs> just forgot about that. Any <laughs> so yeah. Just look. look. Can, 
that 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 other creature can it can it um oh it can't suck itself to get something back it's got to actually die doesn't it Mm. Um, I honestly don't know. No. Based on the pixels, I cannot interpret. Scrapyard, something, something or other, probably. I'll get my, I'll get my phone and have a look. Oh yeah, too easy. All right, so it's being sacrificed, and then putting the two modular counters onto Frexian Revoker, which. Uh, which allows that to be a chump block by the trinket mage rather than a trade. Uh, I think this is a strong play. So it's got modular two, tap, sacrifice an artifact, search your library for a construct card, reveal it, put it into your hand, then shuffle your library. Roger. So it it can sacrifice itself, put the two modular counters on the Phyrexian Revoker, which allows it to bash through the trinket mage, Uh, find a construct that could be, could finish the game or like a metal worker and just go, ha ha. Um, ooh, what is that? Um, uh, the three, two that discounts your stuff, I think. Oh, okay. The, Foundry yeah. yeah. One, Foundry inspector, the one that's big in, in vintage. Yeah. All right. Yeah. That makes sense. Just, just pressure, right? Three, two is huge. Uh, the main thing here is, uh, uh, if it is the mental plan, I really, really like, Mulch's play of making the Frexian Revoker bigger, forcing the chump block, making it bigger, and then going, hey, I've got two threats here. If you go Mentor, Lotus, Petal, and nothing else, then you've got a 2-2 two, two, and a 1-1 one, one on my turn. There's no way that you're going to want to trade with either of these creatures with the Mentor itself. So it allows Mulch to actually attack for um, you know seven, which is good. Mm-hmm. So with that, Astrolabe? Yeah. Astrolabe off uh, Snow Covered Island. So maybe it's not Mentor. Because otherwise you just, yeah, you just, maybe he's hoping to draw the Mentor because otherwise you just go like Mentor, Lotus Petal, Astral. Oh no, you can't do Astrolabe off off Lotus Petal. Maybe that's why. Mm. All right, this is not Mentor then. (laughs) Goblin Welder. Nice. The Welder with the Astrolabe is really good. The Welder can mess mess with Luke's board. Oh, because you can switch their permanents around. You can give them back the engineer's explosives. Mm. Nice. But the modular's That's not, the modular's really good against welder. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Nice. What is the pixelated thing that came out of hand after that? No it costs one mana off oh, a watery. Oh, grave. that's chromatic star. Chromatic star. Okay. Nice. That's good with welder as so, well. Yeah. Yeah. It just it. It all depends on whether or not uh, Aaron can get some payoff spell for that Welder interaction. So now here we go. We're going to get something down. Yeah, oh, shutting down the Welder is huge. Force of Will, no, no other sculpt. blue card. Otherwise, Force of Will, Ethereum Sculptor, you, Voltaic Key. Would you not pitch the Ethereum Sculptor to Force of Will here? On? Because once you've got the Welder online, you just have maybe that's the poor, ability per, to... Maybe that's Perilous Voyage, actually. The blue card. <laughs> yeah, and he needs to keep the Perilous Voyage in order to bounce, uh, bounce something. Mm. Yeah, it's Perilous Voyage. Mm. That, that, if I had Perilous Voyage, I would, I would definitely get rid of the Spyglass earlier, but maybe he drew it later. I think the... I think the reason here is, uh, and the reason for not forcing it is Aaron's going, well, if you're playing the Sorcerer's Spyglass, then I can ensure that you're going to get a zero for one, right? Uh, because my welder was not actually on the plan, right? This, this wasn't actually part of the plan. Or you're just going to Perilous Voyage back the Sorcerer's Spyglass. If you're going to Perilous Voyage back the Sorcerer's Spyglass, I think you just force it. I don't know. There's two scary cards in Mulch's hand. You, know, you, you never know. With the Foundry Inspector, mm-hmm. yeah, true. With the Foundry Inspector out, it's pretty terrifying to think there could be, you know, Ancient Tomb and then a five drop. You know, there could be some some pretty scary stuff. Yeah. So having that Force of Will is pretty relevant. I just can't read. So I think what... we're still tanking on the. Decision, right? For what to decide for. I think Luke's thinking about what to name. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. I mean, you have... no, it's a pity about that. Not two times speed. <laughs> well, uh, it gives us app. time to speculate. 
Yeah. <laughs> um, I just don't know what um, Aaron's plan is at this point. I mean, I haven't played his deck, so. Mm. Is he on Time Vault plan or is he on like value plan? He can't I think be on he's, value. It, he's I dying. think he's on sick, sick rip Time Vault. Perilous Voyager thing. Draw into a uh, land. Uh, not draw into a land. Um, draw into a land off the Chromatic Star. Okay, so he must have named Goblin Welder because we just got a chump block with it. Okay, yeah, 100% the Goblin Welder was named then. So essentially, Sorcerer's Spyglass was destroy target welder, they gain four life. Yeah. That's essentially kind of what it did, which is fine. Soul Guard Lantern. You know, like it. Soul Guard Lantern was actually an answer to Goblin Welder, mm. which is interesting. Well, you have to lose a card. Maybe. To do that. Yeah. yeah, maybe when you when you know that. Hmm, interesting. Maybe when you know that you can see their hand with Sorcerer Spyglass, and you know that you're shutting down. You don't have to shut the welder down because you've got Sorcerer Spyglass. I mean, because uh, so, you've got Soul Guide Lantern. Maybe Sorcerer think, Spyglass just names. I think the welder is very threatening because. <laughs> Because you can still mess with yeah. Vulture's board, oh, yeah. and you can still do shenanigans with Chromatic Star and Alchemist Astrolabe, even after you've lost your graveyard. Um, yeah, I agree. I think it's just like the correct, the correct uh, name. But there's probably some like weird niche scenarios depending on what's left in Vulture's hand, where he doesn't name the welder uh, and just kind of goes for gold to make sure he doesn't lose. Uh, so what is that that card that came out? Oh, is that like Leveler or something? Just I'm not sure. We'll find <laughs> out. It's either way. It's it's lethal. The creature. We'll, we'll say it's pretty Amazon much on ten. So he he's still live. Yeah, I mean, if he, he's got Voltaic Key and he's got a bounce spell, and so if he bounces the Revoker, there's nothing. There's no needle effect in play stopping the Time Vault combo. Exactly, which is why I'm like, oh, Sorcerer Spyglass name Time Vault, mm. just or Voltaic Key, just to make sure you don't lose. But but uh, you're right about the. Uh, Welder doing random shenanigans to change the combat math. It's grim monolith. So is grim monolith. Okay, so that was drawn either for turn or from the chromatic star, and uh, voltaic. He gives it a lot of mana, so maybe there could be something big and scary coming out. What about so uh, that five drop um, planeswalker? Um, I don't think that's enough. Uh, like Tezzeret. Yeah, it'd be really hard because. There's only one blue mana available off the uh, off the astrolabe, so the basically he's setting up for just sick rip. Oh, actually, it doesn't need a sick rip. He can use the he can use the grim model at the end of turn with the astrolabe to perilous voyage the uh, the Frexian revoker scry two, and then hope to draw. Uh, time vault amongst the next three cards. Yeah, I think that's what he's going to do. The other option he would have had was War of Invention with the Grim Monolith, but yeah, the blue mana was kind of hmm. a sticking point. So we know that... W Actually, we know his two cards, Force of Will, Perilous Voyage, right? Because I think there's only two cards in hand. So mm. this is the only plan. It's just Perilous Voyage. The But if he Perilous Voyage is the Revoker in combat, he loses the game. Has to be end of turn. But how much damage is it? Level is big, know. right? Is it actually level? I don't know if it's level. Well, he's got seven. <laughs> it's just, just the Revoker and the Foundry Inspector's seven already. Yeah, so this is the problem. I think it's just a concession. You just concede here, right? Like there's, there's no route um, where the Perilous Voyage is going to be used in combat and somehow engineer a situation where uh, the Revoker doesn't come down and name time bolt. So the Voltaic uh, Force of Will, maybe the second card in hand is blue card for the to Force of Will the mm. the um, Revoker. And the that Voltaic could be key untaps his Grim Monolith to give him mana. Mm. Um, this turn. His, so he's Scry to This has, has to be like they're probably both on the bottom and hope to top deck Time Vault, unless it's something that somehow you know tutors for Time Vault. This is something I noticed about Aaron's deck. Like you, you think you've got him, like you put him under maximum disruption and pressure and you're just about to win. You get him down to eight and he's, 
he's not even flustered. He's, he's to, every yeah. turn he has feels like he could just win out of nowhere. And yeah. it's quite frightening. Well, they're both top. Both on top. This is this. Surely Mulch is just like no. <laughs> <laughs> this is terrifying. <laughs> so obviously Revoke is coming back down again. So Mulch is digging for something. Oh yeah, dig with the dig with the Soul Guide Lantern. That's fair. The, the arc about so, the, 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 he's got he's got a lot of mana with that um, three two. Ooh, nice. New spell bomb. He's cycling again. He's nice. Yeah, cycle again. Exile the graveyard. Nice. And yeah. I mean, I mean, it, it, like he's earmarked into having one mana available for the uh, for the Phyrexian Revoker, but that's about it. City of Traders. So. Depending on, yeah, City of Traders got ample mana. Mana is not a problem. He just needs to have an, a way to shut it down. When your opponent on a time vault deck just top tops, that's. <laughs> well, there was no force of will then. Oh, Aaron's thinking. All right. No force of will. Surely, surely it's game over then. Yeah, unless he's got like Ponder on top, and he might have Ponder Preordain on top, or not Preordain. I don't know. Ponder Brainstorm or something. Yeah, it, like it has to be Brainstorm because he's got to have enough cards to be able to like uh, lightning bolt that and play the time bolt. Because uh, the the cards in hand, uh, we know a force of will and not a blue card. Yeah. So this was actively scribed to the top. We got to keep that in mind. Actively scribed to the top, so that so there's a plan here, what and it should Tezzeret. be. Tezzeret, Tezzeret, does he win? Tezzeret's the win. That's ponder. No. Ponder. Oh, well, that's a, some kind of tutor. It's tribute mage. No, it's tutor. Okay. Three mage. So still got, still got mage gets up. three. Right? No, it's a two. Two. Oh, tribute is two? Yeah. Trophy mage is three. Okay. There's there's a lot of them. Trinket, trinket, tribute, trophy. Okay. Oh, Balfour Street. So, That's desperate. Uh, this is this feels like this feels like a you know, like a buy buy a it's not even gonna buy a turn because there's there's four there's it's three attackers. Two. Yeah, this this is like uh, desperation mode. He's got two. He's got two um, blockers, but he is on two. Oh, it is two blockers, but yeah. I think he's hoping that maybe Mulch doesn't attack with the Phyrexian Revoker or something. But he's just you just send them both. All right. Oh, yeah, you send everything when he's on two. Mm. So uh, Aaron got to draw a card off the Bell for Strix. Oh, it will yeah. get to draw a card of the Bell Strix. All right. Um, the, there is still one minor floating to untap the Grim Monolith yeah. if needed. That's, and that's the one minor just uh, on, in the purple dice. Something like Sahili would help you stabilise, but it is hard to cast. Mm. Darkham's Astrolabe does a lot to help Baron's mana. Yeah, Astrolabe's fantastic. Eh? All right, so untap that. And it might just be a pass. And if it's a pass, I mean, it's just like fast forward. It'd be good it's if you could like double block lightning bolt, you know, and then untap. Yeah. And it that's, that's the dream, right? Like yeah. just to set it up, it just, it feels like spinning, spinning wheels in desperation mode for the last couple of turns. Dust bowl's pretty good. Dust bowl's pretty relevant, right? Yeah. Mm, getting rid of, so there's no way you can play the, he can float the mana, but he can't sacrifice the um, City of Traders to the Dust Bowl, <laughs> right? Oh, it's a trigger. Oh, okay. Wow, that's so good. So the respond City of Traders trigger. triggers, respond to the trigger in any second. Nice. <laughs> nice little combo there. I like it. So getting rid of the, the potential threat of, uh, you know, some kind of mana yeah. uh, trick. Um, so there's still Force of Will and... Let's say best case scenario, force of a blue card is in hand. One unknown card in hand. Three cards in hand. Yeah. Mm. Force of a blue card, lightning bolt. And then next turn, draw a time bolt. But it's still, you know, these are sketch. Uh, and, and, Mulch doesn't attack with all three. Yeah. <laughs> 
he's he's hoping that you know Mulch gets scared by posturing such what, that. Well, what what if the middle card's only a one one? I don't know what that middle card is. Nah, it's got to be big. Yeah. It's no way it's that small. It might just be like Rust Golem or something, right? I don't know. I'm just gonna pull it up over here. He's swinging with everything. Uh, what does it look like? Oh, is it that card there in front? Yeah, it's that card in front. It was a he won. Drop. He won. Yeah. He just swung with everything. So Aaron was yeah, kind of it. testing him. That's it. It was that that card in the front there. Oh, shambling, shambling, shambling suit. Shambling. Oh, X, it's an X3 where X is the number of artifacts. Oh, it's massive. Card. Yeah, suitably massive. Yeah. Nice. So uh, is this straight into the next one? Otherwise, you can just fast forward to the third. Yeah, we'll, do you want to look at sideboards? Yeah, uh, let's is, have a look. This is Mulch's sideboard. All right. Uh, a lot of cards I don't know, but I'm oh, going to say I can see Powder Keg, Shield Sphere, Fraxian Walker, Sun Droplet, Wormcoil Engine, Maze of Vith, Welding Jar, Mask of Intolerance, intolerance maybe? Mask of Intolerance. Oh, okay. It does, does damage yeah, to them is. based on how many non basics they've got. Oh, cool. So it's kind of like Price of Progress. In a way, turn, half, yeah. half price of progress. Yeah. Ah, okay, that's cool. Yeah. Uh, Trinosphere, yeah. Graph Digger's Cage, Chalice of the Void, Crucible of Worlds, Torpor Orb, and Tormod's Crypt and Emoria. Okay, I did know. I, I need 14 of them. Oh, 14 I'm sure out of 15. If Torpor Orb will come in to stop like Tribute Mage from triggering and stuff like that. Yeah. I mean, there are, what, Powerful there's two streak. mages and Strix. Emery. Maybe they're just better than the. No, nah, I don't think. I, I don't think it's. I, I, I don't think page is good. I think fundamentally, mulch doesn't change much. Is there a Dak Faden in? There's no Dak Faden, so I guess Wormquell Engine comes in. Well, so maybe. No, nah. the life gains are relevant. It's a bit slow as a threat. It's not great. Yeah. All right. You want tempo threats? Trinosphere. Trinosphere is better here. It's fine. Graph Digger's Cage is All good. Right. Yeah. All right. Turns so off, cage transfer welders and um, maybe torpor orb. I, I think fundamentally it doesn't change much. What about Aaron's list? Okay. So mask of intolerance. It's every turn if there's four or more basic land types among the opponent's lands, they take three damage. So against oh, four color like decks. Domain. Against four color right. decks. It's like three a turn. That's good. I'd, I'd play three that. Mm. Three damage That's every cool. turn. Massive. This is specifically against like Yidra sticks. Yeah, yeah. Um, so what what about the um I think it's on Moxfield, isn't it? This list? Yeah. Okay, sideboard we have what do we have? Whip flare? Non artifact? Nope, that's bad. Uh, uh, braid's great. A braid is fantastic. Sudden demise is terrible. Deluge is great. Um Fatal Push is probably quite good. Yeah, that's it. Mm. And maybe no, actually, no, they're maybe like three and four drops, so yeah. Maybe him. Mostly like the abrade, the wear and tear, and the deluge are the main things that are coming in. Yeah. All right. Shall we fast forward to the uh, the game? There's some resolving mulligans, I guess. It looks like mulch is keeping. Yeah. All right. Here we go. All right, so this is Snow Covered Swamp in two. What are they? Pixels and Sorry. another pixel. <laughs> two highly pixelated cards that I hope do not know. I don't know. Help it, I reckon it's Hope of Gear oh, and Welding. Manifold jar. Key? Manifold Key. And no, I think jar. it's Manifold Key. Manifold Key. Okay, cool. Ancient but, I think Hope of Girapur costs one and it has to be zero. So yeah, Welding Jar, Manifold Key. Okay. Because it's only got one minor. All right, Ancient Tomb. Ancient Tomb starts a huge. Oh, this is this is gonna be good. Scrap Peep Scrounger? Yeah. Okay, cool. I know he's playing it. That's pretty nice. Very nice to get that out early. Is is a decent attacker. Is this a an Inquisition of Kozilek or something? Yep, can't quite make out the the art. Uh, walking ballista, scrabbly furnace, yeah. um, <laughs> Tolaran Academy, something indestructible land, something else. Indestru okay, Darksteel Citadel, 
something and something else. <laughs> yeah, you've got this. That's got the scrapyard recombiner. That's the same modular one. Oh, okay. I think it's the. Then I think it's the snake after that. Apologies to our uh, <laughs> to national viewers. Uh, you might not be familiar with Australia's broadband situation, <laughs> but <laughs> evidently it's not very good. <laughs> so what do you take in this hand? Uh, it's not even the snake one. I don't know because I don't know the last two cards. But um, all right, ignoring the last two cards, you take, do you take damage. You take the threats. Whatever's yeah. like a two, three, two or something. You you take that. Yep. Okay. You that's fair. To, you just want to buy time so you can combo out. Take the biggest possible threat, which might be a yeah. yeah. All right, walking blister seems respectable. Just get rid of a get rid of some of that tempo. Yeah, that's, that's is that also an ancient tomb? Yeah, ancient tomb. All right. That's fairly weak. Why is he the... oh, I think that... ancient tomb pass is the uh, is a situation of this kind of combo deck. Whereas you're used to playing the ramp decks where it's like ancient tomb, vault ahead and just yeah. do something nasty. Whereas this is like ancient tomb, patience, patience, yeah. patience, win. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know about the welding jar because, um, I mean, Welch doesn't have that much interaction. I suppose he's got engineered explosives. But other than that, he's not doing much to destroy. Oh, he's got powder keg and um, ratchet bombs. So maybe it's good. Yeah. Yep. I can see it just yeah. being necessary and it's just a chump block evil. you can block and regenerate sometimes to buy yourself time yeah i think maybe he was expecting some you know nasty cards being brought in from the sideboard that destroy his time vault but in reality if you're in an umori deck you don't have a braid you don't have these kind of spells to actually destroy those artifacts it's usually just going to be a powder keg and a engineered explosive that's about it yeah i think the welding jar is necessary as for like to enable like the emery combos and stuff like that so you can get a spell every turn although he doesn't have paradox engine anymore yeah so it's less needed turning on mox opal that kind of stuff just yeah random additional artifact synergies so mulch is just pressuring with his scrap heap scrounger but can now start to either cycle through the deck or generate mana for talarian academy so by playing by playing scrabbling claws furnace frexing furnace uh and then playing the and floating one mana and then playing oh playing this oh this is yeah this is the um that reach thing from oh, eldraine the yeah the snake yeah the snake snake i was surprised so he played like a one, 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 one one snake just for the mana just really want just no just really wants that mana wants that lotus petal for that turn and just wants to turn the screws yeah. I mean, it's really aggressive, right? It's really, really aggressive. Oh, if there's Ready any matchup you damage. want to be aggressive, it's this one mm. against the combo. So you can untap and do um, lots, you know, lots of damage. You can do six damage next turn. Yeah. The question is, is it just better to deploy the other thing on the left? Oh, that's a toxic deluge. That's yeah. good. Got blown out. So you like, I, I, I think that the um, the playing of the one one is just worse than just tapping the academy to play the other threat and keep the 1-1 one, one in hand. And the next turn, you play it as a 5-5. Five, five. Yeah. Yeah. You're only getting an extra one damage in from that, mm. that turn. Yeah. Like, I don't think you want to get one. That's why, I mean, that's what I was saying. Like, oh, it's a bit aggressive. I, I think it's aggressive to try and get an extra one or two points in when in reality, you'll chunk in for five and then five again the following turn. Yeah. I mean, he probably so, wanted another target with modular ability against removal. Oh, that's good. Yeah, that's fair. I got punished for it anyway. Yeah. But yeah, the Darksteel Citadel powering up the academy is pretty sweet, but now he has no need for the mana now that he's got his threat out. <laughs> Just turn that turn that Lodestone Golem sideways. Yeah, and Lodestone's a premium threat against combo. Mm. Um, even though Aaron's got artifacts to play through it a bit, um, it's still very good in shutting down ponders and things like that. Absolutely. Yeah, and he's on thirteen with an ancient on thirteen, tomb. ancient tomb, and no, no third or fourth land drop. Yeah, with four cards in hand, I'm pretty sure this is game over. I'm I'm happy to call it now. <laughs> <laughs> it's the funniest thing is that time bolt off the top, he just wins the game, right? Yeah, he's color screws he's a bit color screws. He's a four color deck, and he's he's well, he's effectively four color deck plus soul lands. It's very greeny. Mm. 
Or it's like, kind of like five colors when you got the the colorless lands. But yeah, it's he's still live to Time Vault. You know, Time Vault just wins the game. Yeah. So the um, that spell sky it's offering protection for the um, lodestone as well. So that's going to stick mm, around. It's good. It's very good. And there's only one toxic deluge available. You know, so. Yeah. And it's been exiled as well, which is a which is a little bonus of uh, Frixian Furnace. Doesn't come up come up that often in this kind of a matchup, but in, in fair matchups, the Furnace and the Scrabbling Claws and the Relic of Genitus and the Soul Guide Lanterns do do work. Oh yeah. yeah. So this is Dust Bowl. Oof. Dust Bowl is pretty strong here. Getting to sacrifice your Ancient Team when you don't need it anymore. And just shut your opponent's mana off. Yeah, that's that's really punishing. Yeah, back to turn yep. one. Yep, facing down a lodestone for protection. Yeah, writing is definitely on the wall with that dust bowl. I I believe that the game is just almost sealed entirely because we know that there's no land in hand. It's it's mm. almost entirely sealed. Before that dust bowl, uh, it was entirely live to just time bowl. So Lotus Petal is not yeah. irrelevant here. Maybe a Mox Petal would be good as well, but... Um, mm. Yeah, if Mulch has got another land, he just untaps and destroys the Swamp, which is very threatening. Yeah, it can only destroy... It can destroy any land, not just non-basic oh, non, lands. No, it's, it's only non-basic, non -basic. you're right. Yeah. So the Swamp is safe for now. Uh, and, yeah, there are two turns, but yeah, two mana's being used here. Yeah. yeah, this is game over. Just very punishing. Lose your Lotus Petal just to play a Ponder. <laughs> yeah it's pretty much game over uh here you know you could you could preordain into city of traitors and time vault like those two cards draw the city of traitors don't play it past turn next turn draw the time vault city of traitors win the game yeah. that's aaron that's doesn't the have game. the workshop he doesn't have mishra's workshop anymore to increase mm. his chances of that kind of play um got land mm, fetch land helps fetch land definitely helps but the next card has to be Time Bolt and Basic Land, or Time Bolt and any land, sorry. Here's seeing the value of just being able to combine pressure and disruption, especially, especially mana uh, suppression against a combo deck. It's a very powerful strategy, like a fish strategy. It's absolutely a really skill of, of combo. The only thing is not to cut down the tutoring ability. Something yeah. that you often see in, uh, you know, control decks and you know you look at the deck and you just kind of go why is there no tempo sub theme in this you know like playing hard control is really really difficult there has to be something in there to oh okay engineer explosives for one oh he's deciding on whether it's one or two yeah i see because he's worried about maybe possibly a uh, a time bolt coming off the top so yeah, if it's I... specifically time bolt that you lose the game to do you set it for two or because you can't set it for one and destroy the um, the uh, key now because it'll just get regenerated. Yeah. yeah. No, actually, maybe you do. Maybe you just destroy it. You just destroy the key, which gets rid of the the uh, gets rid of the uh, welding jar, and therefore it turns off the ability to to have Mox Opal and an Opal Time Vault win. Yeah. Yeah, that world in jazz. No, actually, yeah. You still can through that, but anyway. <laughs> you still got the ability to um, dust bowl this way as well. Yes. Nice. He scoops it up. Yeah, just too much. Yep. Came out. That's, that's just what pressure does, right? Just put your opponent under pressure and use your cobbling of threats. Doesn't really matter whether your threats are 3 2. For two mana, or whether it's a five three that taxes their mana, or whatever it is, you're just turning things sideways and just randomly uh, killing a land, or um, you know, pithing needling something. Mm. It works. You know, it's a it's a relevant strategy. Yeah, I think Aaron I like got it. a I like bit it. unlucky. Um, very interesting. He got unlucky in the second game to get mana screw, but that happens to everyone, and that's that's a risk of running a twenty land deck with you know, greedy requirements and facing down. We got wasteland effects, um, and Basically in the, a consistent deck where it's just kind of yeah. go threat, 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 turn yeah. sideways. And taxi. in the first um, game, you got unlucky just to face two needle effects, like although but mulch was the double tricky. needle, 
Yeah, the double needle was harsh. Playing them in the first place, but also in mulliganing to find them as well. So, mm. so. Yeah, it's discipline play there to just mulligan a, an otherwise fine hand to get a needle effect and end up getting two. It's very, very strong. There you can see the board awesome. playing. He did oh, I see. So it's the cuts he brought in. Yeah. Is that Bosch Iron Golem? Nah, that's the 5-5, five five, I think. Yeah. Oh, that's the Rust Golem. Okay. <laughs> you look like Bosch. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Act- activate for red. <laughs> awesome. Well, thank you very much for joining us, everyone. Uh, that was the semifinals of the Toowoomba tournament. I believe that uh, in the future, we might be able to bring you a finals match, maybe. Yep. Thank you. See you guys.